Where is he? Where is that? Where is that? Where is that? What? Where is that? Ed what? Where is Ed? <laughs> I need. I need him. Ed. Um, Ed. Who? What the Simon? fuck? Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs> Here he is. Thank you so much. <laughs> Disclaimer, this is a heavily cut down and abridged read through. So if you're interested in reading the full book, the author's Amazon page will be linked in the description below. So, guys, have you heard about <laughs> Sorry. Carson? One God second. damn it! I got it. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of chippies you eating? What? What kind of chips are you eating? Potato. <laughs> <laughs> so recently, I found the work of an author by the name of Simone Scarlet. Simone writes a lot of steamy hot romance novels. It's kind of their shtick. And you know, I just happened to be flipping through their catalog when I stumbled across something that's kind of interesting. So I'm gonna give you guys a brief selection of some of their books, and I want you guys to point out which book might look a little bit out of place. Let's look at the Minecraft one. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Blocks of Lust, a Muffcraft <coughs> Minecraft inspired erotic parody written by the Simone Scarlet. You see, look, you, you know it's her because she gave the book a little kiss. No, this is this is some like 56 year old man in his bedroom writing these under a pseudonym such as Dr. Seuss. <laughs> <laughs> you think this is just a uh, pen name for Notch? Marcus? My man. <laughs> I really enjoy the theory that Notch says something transphobic on Twitter and then immediately goes back to write Minecraft. Uh... Minecraft erotica. <laughs> Notch is just using one hand to type out fucking moronic tweets and the other hand <laughs> to, to type up this Minecraft romance novel. It's like when people turn to a life of crime, except this is way worse. <laughs> the book you hold in your hand isn't porn, but it does get racy. Are we not gonna see Steve hang dong? <laughs> Excuse me? It's an erotic reimagining of a popular video game world intended for a- Carson! Don't stop for little old me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. To me, the bleak isolation of this game seemed like an interesting setting for an erotic romance story. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm honest, it just seemed like a fun tale to write. Awesome. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Carson, I swear to God, how many chips are in that fucking bag? You wanna see? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Can we get on with the show? <laughs> Chapter One. Steve realized he'd screwed up the moment he emerged from the mine shaft. He'd fallen victim to one of the most common mistakes newbies make, deep in the bowels of the overworld. Is that an innuendo? <laughs> I mean, deep in the bowels, like for anal. <laughs> it's like the author is pre-gaming us for like what lies within the book. I'm always pre-gaming. You know what they call me? What do they call you, Carson? Pre-game. <laughs> <laughs> Deep in the bowels of the overworld, Steve had found a rich vein of iron ore to collect and had lost track of time as he hammered out block after block of the material. Now he was emerging into the fresh air, inventory flush with valuable ore, only to find that the sun had set long ago and he was alone and isolated in the darkness. Steve's food bar was low. He wasn't wearing armor, and all he had to defend himself was a stone sword that was three quarters of the way to breaking. As the darkness closed in, Steve trudged determinedly through the forest. Steve needed to get to safety, but where? He remembered seeing a distant torch. Where there was a torch, there was normally the safety of a house. Steve didn't know who'd crafted the torch, or whether they'd be hostile or friendly to him. All he knew was that they offered the only hope for his survival. How long is this book? Not long enough. 
chapter 2. Alex finished hanging the painting above her furnace and took a step back to admire it objectively. What do you think, Fritz? She asked. Fritz, Alex's tame wolf, wasn't much for art appreciation, but he cocked his head to the side and barked affirmatively. Cock. Oh, cock! Cock! That said cock! That, that, that's hot. I am in the same boat with you right now. That turned me on. Satisfied with her new decoration, the red-headed crafter busied herself arranging the rest of her new home. Alex had landed on the shores of this new and unexplored biome just this morning. She traveled here in a crafted boat from long, long away. A distant biome of sand and cactus plants. Unexplored biome. The more I read, the more I think that could be an innuendo too. Like her ass. Like her ass is in an unexplored <laughs> biome. <laughs> There's so many new and interesting mobs in this unexplored biome. Un unknown sexy mobs. <laughs> Suddenly, Fritz started barking wildly. She knew what it meant. Hostile mobs were nearby. <gasps> Alex peered out of her window towards the edge of the forest, which lay just beyond the light of the torches she had adorned on the front of her cobblestone house. Emerging from the darkness, she saw a figure. A human figure, not a mob. It's fucking, it's your hair, it's Harold Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> he was a tall man in blue pants and a teal t-shirt, brown hair and a brown goatee. <laughs> thing she could ascertain about this stranger was that he looked like he had massive nuts too that's not what that says oh you're right how, silly of me how, how could i have misread that i liked it though keep going <laughs> swirling magical particles wafted from his drenched clothes like mystical smoke it was obvious he was suffering from the effects of a powerful potion and he had a big cock <laughs> sorry <laughs> and behind him were following mobs. Lots of mobs. With penises. Sure, this stranger looked like he was in trouble, but could it be a trick? Like any crafter, she read the stories of griefers, fellow explorers who tricked and stole from their fellow players. They took resources from those who risked it all, mining or exploring for them. Could this stranger outside be a griefer? Now say it sexy. Now say it sexy, yeah, yeah. Could this stranger outside be a grief? No, that's just not doing it for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. But as Alex stared out of the window, she felt butterflies in her stomach, and she realized that she had to do something. Flinging open the oak door, the red-haired crafter stepped out of the safety of her home and charged towards that staggering, injured stranger. This way, she barked. The stranger took her hand and looked up as Alex dragged him away from the clawing arms of the mobs. Arigato gozaimasu, he murmured. That's not what that says. <laughs> you ever wondered what it'd be like to have sex with lag? Like, what if Steve and Alex went to the Far Lands? What then? You, uh, wait, is that is that a reference? Anyone knows? Do, do people know the Far Lands? No, can you explain the Far Lands? Alright, so in the old days of Minecraft, if you went far enough out into the world, the world gen would start glitching the fuck out. So there was this, like, ridiculously crazy looking area just called the far lands that was like this mystical place that you could go if you walked far enough and was extremely hard to get to because it was like literally millions of blocks out and i was just wondering what what if steve and alex had sex there <laughs> good question that was an extremely long-winded explanation for a very simple question like what if what if steve whipped out his cock in the far lands <laughs> you ever wondered um, if, like, a potion of strength, too, would make sex, like, really good. <laughs> you know, Carson, I actually have, I've never thought about that before. What if you put, if you drank the strength, too, and then you went to the far lands? <laughs> <laughs> and then you had sex there. Chapter 3 Steve lay gasping on the floor of this stranger's cobblestone house. He was exhausted and in pain. His health bar was practically depleted, and while the potion of poison wouldn't kill him now, he was still racked with agony as the poison worked its way through his system. Bro, those things last like a minute. <laughs> <laughs>
Maybe he's like really, really low on health. Maybe he has like only one half heart left, Carson. He's playing on hardcore, Carson. Bro, you just get like 10 blocks and you just block yourself up and you're fine. Then you eat food. Dude, it's so easy. But all of that paled in comparison to his more pressing issue. Where was he? And who was this red-headed stranger looming over him with her sword raised? Steve looked her up and down. She was beautiful, dressed in green clothes with long red hair. She also looked dangerous. In his current condition, with his health bar practically empty, Steve knew that one swing of her iron sword would instantly end his life. Who, who are you? He asked, voice ragged. I should be asking you the same question, the girl responded. Are you a griefer? If so, you've come to the wrong house. I, I'm not a griefer, Steve held up his hands desperately. I was just trying to get home and let myself get cornered in the darkness. If you hadn't come out and rescued me, I'd have been done for. Yeah, but wouldn't it, wouldn't it be sexy if he was a griefer? <laughs> He'd be like a forbidden romance. That shit's hot. Yeah. Oh, you're a griefer? Well, it looks like I'm going to have to punish you. I'm into it. And then she takes out her sword and kills him instantly. What the fuck? <laughs> Dude, what is your problem? <laughs> I'm Alex, the girl explained. This is Fritz. Steve cautiously reached out and patted the dog's head. Fritz didn't flinch. In fact, he started licking steak juice off Steve's fingers with his big tongue. I guess he likes you, Alex grinned. It'll be daylight soon, and you can go wherever you were going then. I have plenty of steak back at my house, Steve promised her, and a cow out back. You can refill your pail if you want, he smiled sheepishly. It's the least I can do after you saved my ass like that. Alex winked playfully. Well, it's a nice ass. It deserved better than to get eaten by a zombie. <laughs> do, do zombies eat ass? Are we talking about eating ass? Yeah. I hope so. That's where I draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> chapter 4. Carson, would you like to take the, the beginning of chapter 4? Mm. <sighs> yeah. It's okay, Carson. Take your time. Steve led Alex across the clearing <laughs> and opened the door of his house for her, ushering her inside. It was cool and dark on the other side of the oak door, and Alex had to narrow her eyes to see clearly. The ground floor of Steve's house was long and low. Cobblestones formed a table in the center of the room, and he'd stacked chests full of wheat, bread, and stake against one wall. <laughs> I like how you're reading this like a beat poet. It's, it's cool. It's good. A battered suit of iron armor <laughs> stood on an armor stand. <laughs> As Alex stood there mentally fucking everything she saw, Steve crossed the room to the furnaces and pulled out the blocks of iron ore he'd mined the previous evening. He threw them into the furnace and watched the fire flare up as they smelted the valuable resource. When that iron smelted, I'm going to use it to build an iron sword, Steve explained <laughs> as he emptied out lapis lazuli and red stone from his inventory into one of his empty chests. I don't want to get caught with my pants down again like I did last night. Alex leaned against Steve's cobblestone table and asked, So what happened? It was pretty dumb to be roaming a forest through through a for to be roaming through a forest in the <laughs> middle of the night, especially with your food bar so low, and nothing but a stone sword to defend yourself. Steve's cheeks burned pink. I found a great vein of iron ore in a nearby cave complex, he explained. I was dumb. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I spent so much time mining I lost track of time. When I finally realized I needed to head back home to eat and sleep, it was already dark. You're lucky you made it. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have done. <laughs> Steve admitted. I was barely able to make it to your house. I'd never have survived long enough to get back here. But then his eyes narrowed. 
Speaking of which, did, speaking of which, where did you come from? I walked through that forest yesterday morning, and and your house sure as the nether wasn't there then. <laughs> That's the fucking worst line that I've ever read. I want to ask you, do you think love can bloom even on a battlefield? Chapter 5. It started to grow dark. It's too early for nightfall. Alex gazed up at the sky worriedly, but Steve wasn't worried. The moment he heard a peal of thunder, he knew what to expect. Steve grabbed Alex's hand, and they ran back inside his house, laughing at the deluge that soaked their clothes. Alex shivered. Her green clothes were plastered to her body, and despite the warmth of the blazing furnaces, she was chilly. Cautiously, Alex reached out her hand and slipped her fingers between Steve's. Steve looked down at her and smiled. I like this. Alex smiled. I can't believe what a difference it makes being around somebody. Steve nodded. He felt it too. What they were ultimately searching for couldn't be mined or discovered hiding in a treasure chest. <laughs> This is wild. <laughs> it's okay, Alfred. Just, <laughs> just keep going. I'm cold. Alex admitted. Her wet clothes were still clinging to her. Here. Steve reached out. Give them to me. We'll dry them on top of the furnace. Alex laughed nervously. <laughs> but what will I wear? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you don't have a spare set of clothes upstairs, do you? No. Steve admitted. But, unlike in your little house, I do have beds upstairs. Snug beds. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> he looked at Alex with a mischievous glint in his eye. And when there's a thunderstorm outside, it's one of the few times you can actually use a bed in the daytime. <laughs> <laughs> hey. It's dropping Minecraft facts in this fucking romantic 200 page chapter looking ass it's gotta be accurate dude it is gotta be accurate to minecraft rules without accuracy you can't relate 10 out of 10 okay here steve was reaching up the walls of his house and pulling two wool banners from the cobblestone wall wrap yourself in this he passed her one and then threw the second one over his own shoulders alex giggled <laughs> Moments later, she was naked beneath the warm wall banner. Steve laid her clothes across the furnace. Do you want to come upstairs? Jesus, catch me right now. <laughs> Chapter 6. The rain beat down on the roof of Steve's cobblestone and oak wood house. As Alex followed him up the creaking stairs, she thought of how comforting the sound was. For the first time in as long as she could remember, she felt secure and safe. Outside, Fritz was barking happily, and she knew that downstairs her clothes were drying and more steak was broiling in the furnace. Here, at the top of the stairs, Steve offered her a tour. It's not much, but I live here alone, so it's never had to be. The upstairs of Steve's house was similarly open plan to the downstairs. It's lovely, Alex smiled. Squeezing her hand, Steve led Alex over to the beds and pulled back the red blankets. <laughs> Carson, Jesus. It's like two sentences into the sexy stuff and you're already just like <laughs> fucking bursting. Listen, I don't get much action. <laughs> I promise I won't look, he told her. Alex giggled as Steve turned away. She let the woolen banner slip from her bare shoulders, and she slithered into bed. She slithered like a snake? <laughs> she didn't even walk. She just, like, slid her way through. Wait, I can do this, guys. That's how she got into bed. She was like... <laughs> <laughs> That's a perfect recreation. Excellent. Thank you for the visual, Carson. No problem. <laughs>
It's okay, you can look now, she told him. Steve nodded and crossed to the other side of the bed. There, in a practice maneuver, he slipped beneath the blankets and tossed the banner to the oak floorboards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he aimed the cursor over the bed and right-clicked, putting himself in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> this is now his spawn point. Now they were both in bed, together, naked. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mario. <laughs> Underneath the covers... Was that a, was that a Mario reference? <laughs> I like that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Underneath the covers... What? <laughs> <laughs> Underneath the covers, their hands... You know, I'm like the... Sorry, one second. We're talking about Mario now. <laughs> of course. You know how on like the, on like the Mario 64 DS screen... When like um, Mario was like, it was just his face. Yeah. Right, and you could mess with it. Yeah. Poor guy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about that more? <laughs> Sorry. They'll warm up in a second. He promised, rubbing his hands up and down the curve of her waistline, hoping the friction would warm them both up. Giggling, they snuggled together, warm skin pressed against warm, blocky skin. Soon, they were lying side by side beneath the blankets somehow, even though in Minecraft you can't get beneath them. Looking deep into each other's eyes. Wait, Carson, Carson, please, yeah. please read the top right and start with w -w wow wow Wow, she gasped, sliding her fingers up and- oh, Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Carson, you gotta finish. I'm- Dude, I already finished. <laughs> She gasped, sliding her fingers up and down his throbbing length. Your heart is bedrock. She shivered deliciously, goosebumps prickling on her skin. Steve smiled sheepishly. He wondered, why would she say that? His penis was not as hard as bedrock, and bedrock is unbreakable. This made no sense, but he went along with it anyways, because there was a sexy woman in his bed. Steve was fairly certain that an iron pickaxe could probably mine his cock. <laughs> Maybe even stone. <laughs> Maybe even stone. What on a bad day. <laughs> Steve smiled sheepishly and slid his own hand from the smooth curves of Alex's hip to cup one of her small first breasts. It was square. <laughs> Wait, hold on. What does it mean by first breasts? First? First breasts. You, you know how you read left to right? <laughs> yeah. Alex bit her lip. She was growing wetter and wetter between her legs. Must have spilled a water bucket down there, Steve <laughs> murmured. Steve, Alex moaned. Oh, God, Steve. I think I'm going to explode. Is this a TNT joke? <laughs> <laughs> like a creeper when it gets close to your house. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> hey, can I get the link for this? <laughs> no reason. Dude, you gotta buy it. It's like two bucks. You bought this? Derek, you you spent money on this? Yes, I bought this, and you know what? I'm proud. Proud to have helped a small, independent creator reach closer and closer to their dream. Proud to have supported an industry that allows anyone to create the art that they want and get paid for it. Proud to have reached out and paid someone for their efforts, their contributions to society that would normally have gone unnoticed. You horny motherfucker. Chapter 7. I'm not really interested in this one. There's not really any saucy stuff, but whatever. Alex smiled and returned her head to his chest. For as long as she could remember, she had just crafted and mined and explored for the sake of it. Because that's all there was in her life. But now she had somebody to share that adventure with. Somebody to build a life with, and that meant that everything else she built here, from mines to houses to castles, would be that much more meaningful. That's kind of beautiful. No, guys, this, that's dumb. Alright. <laughs> Don't read into it too much, it's Minecraft smut. <laughs> can, you, can you go back on the previous page? Because I thought I saw something that made absolutely no sense to me. Sure. Uh, was the fact that she ends a Minecraft erotica with an African proverb. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. African proverb. <laughs> Thank you for reading this book. I hope you enjoyed reading it as much as I enjoyed writing it, which was a lot. 
And if you didn't, please get in contact with me and tell me what you didn't like. I'm always grateful to get feedback on how I can make my work better. Complain about the realism, like you can't actually get under the sheets in Minecraft. Simone, Simone, you are so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to hearing from you. And thanks again. Love, kisses, and other indoor sports. Simone Scarlet. What did you guys think of this hot, steamy Minecraft sex novel? Like, fuck, you know? <laughs> oh. <coughs> Simone. <coughs> Simone. Sorry, I've got chip in my throat. <laughs> Thank you for watching, bros. If you enjoyed this video, why not check out the other content on this channel? It is all epic and very cool. Thanos Irwin 2. <laughs> <laughs>